Okay, click it, click. Four games come. How you going? Now, based off your comments, I've learned that a lot of you watching live in depressing countries completely void of any animal life, besides maybe the occasional subway rat, dead pigeon, and if you're really lucky, monkey freaking out on bath salts. And because of this, a lot of you now have an obsession, almost fetish, with Australia's animals and their beauty. And I'm aware of this, so during my videos, I do try to show off the beautiful guys in my backyard. Wow. But I've now realized this isn't fair to the ugly animals in my yard. So today, I'm going to share the top 10 weird animals in my yard that you probably haven't heard of and are kind of ugly. Alright, now the first animal on this list is the Aussie bush turkey. Bush turkeys are known to be incredibly dumb and greedy animals that will do anything in order to impress a mate. What I meant to say is Lord's Mobile is number one on this list and I love and is the sponsor of this video. Pay attention now on how you could win a prize of $10,000 cash. Lord's Mobile is a great strategy game and perfect to kill time. If I'm And number nine on my list is the butcher bird. Uh, this guy. Butcher birds are a very shy, small songbird related to the Aussie magpie. They are territorial birds that have a beautiful territorial song, which can be sung by one individual, but often involve members of the whole gang. The individual members each have a different section to sing, and if one of them stuffs up, they get evicted from the show. I'm lucky enough to hear all of them rehearsing this song right outside my bedroom window at 6am in the morning when I've had too much to drink. Also, just like the Aussie magpies, they're kind of dickheads and enjoy swooping people, which I actually really respect. But they get even more sadistic than the magpies. The butcher bird gets its name from its terrifying way of feeding, which strikes fear into the heart of every other bird. The butcher bird loves nothing more than eating babies, which they get fresh from the nest of other birds. It's totally, it, that's a baby bird, I reckon. It's totally eating a bird. That is terrifying. And after shoplifting a baby, the butcher bird will impale its victim onto a sharp stick and then slowly use the hook on the end of their beak to rip apart the prey, making it easier to eat in exactly the same way as my local butcher. Hey mate, how you going? What can I eat for you? Uh, what have you, what have you got today? What have I got? We got lamb, we got oh, yeah. sausages, we got it all. And he recently lost his butcher's license for his methods and he wasn't even serving babies, which doesn't seem fair. All right, for the next animal, I'm gonna have to turn out the lights. Hey! Ringtail possums. Just like opossums, but without the O. Possums used to be killed for fur in Australia, and with 23 different species ranging in all different sizes, styles, and colors, they are perfect for making clothes for the whole family. I have two species in my yard, the ringtail possum and the brushtail possum, both named after the accessories they were historically turned into. These possums are most active at night where they will walk around strutting their stuff on top of fences, electrical wires, and anything else they can walk along. And even though you always see them balancing on top of things, they never look happy up there and always look like they want to come down. And possums may seem pretty cute to you, but they are hated by most Australians. You kind of love them until you get to know them when they move uninvited into your house, where they will then set up in your roof space directly above your bed and will then force you to listen to them peeing, rooting and eating their own faecal pellets. Ah. And then, if you ever have the misfortune of coming into contact with one at night, you will experience their advanced defense mechanism, where they will suddenly freeze up and look you dead in the eyes. And before you know it, you're non-consensually engaging in the world's longest staring competition with a marsupial. <sighs> Until one of you, usually me, feels too awkward to continue and you leave them alone. Fortunately, pussums haven't been able to set up in my roof as it's already occupied. <laughs> what? So they've set up their nest in these birds of paradise plants, which I too often accidentally disturb. Never seen that before. No. So cute. 
We should reenact the Vietnam War more often. Ringtail possums usually house their babies in a nest made out of leaves and twigs, which is a similar size and shape to a soccer ball, which is usually made by the dad possum. The male ringtail possum is the only possum in the world known to look after and raise his kids, which is much better than most other mammals, including my dad. But I'm a grown man now and I don't let that kind of stuff get to me. I have nothing but admiration and respect when I see good parenting and a caring family. This is probably the strangest animal in my yard, as I have no idea how it got here, I didn't put it here, and my pond definitely hasn't been around long enough for the fish to evolve. So either it was hitchhiking on one of these prawns, or God is real. And I can't really tell what fish it is. Most likely a minnow, I think. A lonely, lonely minnow. Just chilling in the pond, all by himself, fighting off tadpoles, lizards, and cats. Yes. Bro, it's too too close to nature, man. Hey, and he has some girl. fat ass insects as well. Why did house. I leave you okay. all by yourself for so long? Yeah. Alright, let's go take you down to the creek. <laughs> Fuck is that fun? Well, making nets and webs is pretty intense and a frustrating job. First, you need to pull a ridiculous amount of silk out of your ass, then find the appropriate place to anchor the web to, and then you need to wait patiently for the bugs to come to you. So, one entrepreneurial spider decided to skip the middleman and just make a web that it can bring to the bugs. The net throwing spider is a very common spider in my yard that I usually really? find under this wheelbarrow, that. on the bushes on this window, or on my leg. This guy is around four to five centimeters long with eyes that must weigh more than his whole body. This guy's method of catching prey is actually truly awesome. At night, they make a rectangular net between their front two legs, which they then poop on to serve as aiming spots. And it's debatable whether they do this on purpose or they're just lazy, but it works, so it doesn't really matter. Then they put themselves in an opening and wait for somebody to walk by. When its victim finally passes in front of the poop aiming spot, the spider will lunge down, smearing its poop covered net all over the unsuspecting prey. And this method of active hunting is only possible because of its ridiculously big eyes. And I didn't realize how terrifying they look until I took some close up macro photos. These gigantic compound eyes give them insane night vision. They have the equivalent f-stop number of 0.58, which means they can concentrate light more efficiently than a cat or an owl. The reason they are actually able to process light so effectively is because they have a giant light sensing membrane behind their eyes, which their body destroys and replaces every single day. And this is actually an easy and cheap method you can use to improve the low light capabilities of your own camera as well. And at the moment, this is the only one I could find in my yard, which is dead in the net of a smaller spider. So I guess you're not so smart now, Mr. Entrepreneur. And I have no idea how this bird gets its name and I'm not gonna look it up. The tawny frogmouth is the absolute master of disguise. Its uniquely shaped head, feathers, and personality means you're never sure whether you're looking at a bird or a log. Its indistinguishable disguise even tricks the same species, who will often get mistaken and try to mate with particularly attractive logs. They've also been known to trick lumberjacks, who will attempt to cut a log, which then flies away. Once the frogmouth has done pretending to be a log during the day, okay. it will turn on its gigantic eyes at night and then begin their search for food. I often see them sitting on top of telegraph poles at night or chilling out right outside my windows where they will make this kind of strange and calming whooping noise like they are cheering for me to go to sleep. Dude, please, I'm trying to sleep, shut up. Tony frog mouths live for around 14 years and form lifelong relationships, typically producing three eggs each year. Unlike their relatives, the They're horny cool. frog mouths, who are known to have massive orgies, 
and live very promiscuous lives. And even though the tawny frogmouth has two to three babies a year, they still haven't mastered the nest building process and kind of just chuck a few sticks together on some branches without any arrangements and nothing to secure them in place, which means often their babies will just fall out of the nest. So the next time you're walking around outside, double check Actual before you step mouth. on any sticks to make sure you're not stepping on a tawny frogmouth baby. Probably Sydney's cutest and Mary most Cash, elusive three marsupial. Years, man. Can I, I have fist, please? I Absolutely, my man. Maybe, Gym possibly, none, like seen one in my yard so no, when it no jumped problem, in between these two trees, horse. which I'll is good back. enough for them to make the list. Australia has a few species of gliders, which all look incredibly weird. The species that visits my yard is the sugar glider, which is definitely people's favorite, as you Americans and Chinese people are obsessed with stealing them and selling them online for a ridiculous price. And I strongly urge you not to support the online sale of animals, as they are always overpriced and you can get them much cheaper if you buy them directly from me. If you buy a sugar glider from me now, I'm running a special deal where I will chuck in a put some hairbrush for free. So, as the name implies, sugar gliders are marsupials that use their giant scrotum flap between their legs to glide around. When in the air, they use their tail as a rudder and despite their tiny size, are capable of gliding the length of a football field. But I reckon they could actually what? fly much further if they just listened to me and tried flapping those scrotum flaps. Then they would definitely smash the world record. Really? These gliders like to nest in eucalyptus trees in groups of up to 12, sometimes huddling together to keep warm. And they used to be fairly common in Sydney, but because of land clearing and feral animals, their populations aren't what they used to be. So I decided to head down to the local creek to see if I could spot a couple. And when we arrived, we found something we weren't expecting to find. Oh my God. He's beautiful. I've never Pine. seen one in the world. Really? Pine. Such Oh, so now he's gone into the ground. Look at that. Look at that. You could not pick that guy up. Is he in the ground? No, he's got his nose sticking out. He's looking at me. No, it's not a head show. It's a... Oh my god! Oh, you're so Wait. weird looking! Yeah, Come on. It's a porcupine. You gonna bite me? Porcupine. Yeah, he just doesn't want anything to do with you. No, it's not even... They don't have these noses. <laughs> It's a very cute little face. Echidna? <laughs> it looks like a dick. <laughs> little dick nose. You got a little dick nose, mate. See you later, buddy. Should I give him my sunnies? <laughs> nah, I'll leave him alone. And then when night came around, we began the search for sugar gliders. Alright, so that is what we're hoping to find. But the only thing I found was lots and lots of spiders. Oh. Oh, he's a big, fat, juicy boy. Man, that's a fucking giant huntsman. And speaking of spiders, all the other animals on this list have been relatively big, but there is so much life in the garden that I can't see and don't interact with besides when I'm squishing them with my feet. A hidden, beautiful, scary world. And before this tiny world used to be out of my reach. But now, thanks to this $15 piece of plastic made by a slave in China, I'm able to easily teleport to this macro universe, letting me now see creatures more complex and beautiful than anything a sci-fi writer could come up with. Here's a quick collection of the bugs I managed to snap during an hour of searching in my yard. out of the incredible tiny animals in my yard, that? Looks jumping like a spiders are face. probably my favorite, mostly because they seem intelligent. When you interact and take photos of most bugs, they kind of just stare right past you with this empty-eyed blank NPC look. But not jumping spiders, they actually seem to notice you. They will turn their big, beautiful, furry faces and eyes towards you and kind of rub their face like they're waving hello. No other bug has ever said hello to me. 
jumping spiders have eight individual eyeballs, which give them full 360 vision of the world around them. And they use these amazing eyes to hunt their prey, stalking them in a planned and intelligent manner. And you know, if you ever feel bored or lonely, I seriously encourage you to just search for bugs. Just do it. Just pick a spot in your yard, sit down, shut up, and I guarantee you, if you stare at one spot in your garden for long enough, you will find some pretty amazing creatures. And the funnest part of all of this, you have no idea what you're going to see until you take the photo. Like this woman from South Australia who beat me in discovering a new species of jumping spider right in her front yard. Bitch. And the number one spot on the list goes to the giant fruit bat. Mostly because I think they're very cute and have also received a lot of hate over the last couple of years due to their alleged involvement in a slight worldwide plague caused by bat soup, which I think is absolutely ridiculous as they taste horrible in soup and work much better grilled and then placed in a sandwich. What are you having? It's a bat sandwich. What the hell? Fruit bats are massive, absolutely gigantic, with a wingspan of over three feet. That is literally bigger than some of my subscribers. And unlike some of the other bat species out there who look like someone's hit them in the face what with a the frying pan, these guys actually have a very cute face and are very likable. And like the name implies, fruit bats eat fruit, which is why they occasionally visit my yard as they enjoy eating the berries from this lily pilly tree or have a little nibble at these lemons. I mostly don't see the fruit bats in my yard and more often hear them. Usually, again, when I'm trying to sleep and will hear screeching or a massive whooshing noise outside my window. But occasionally, when I'm lucky, around sunset, the bat colonies will leave the trees they've been hanging out during the day and fly right over my yard in the hundreds of thousands to go and search for food to eat at night. I also live near one of the biggest bat colonies in Sydney. You're all looking at me very unsure of what I am. And it's pretty amazing seeing how many there are and how they kind of choose to hang out together in a social way, kind of like us. And from a distance, there are so many bats that you actually mistake them for leaves on a tree. <laughs> Did I just get poo in my mouth? Speaking of which, their poo also contains a fungus, which can be very, very deadly when inhaled. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, I wouldn't if you like that. that shit. Literally, no pun intended. The fuck? Yeah, I wouldn't want to live in Australia, man. It's too much nature. There, there should be a balance, you know.